Today we're doing the calls 8160. I'm going to do this either long t-shirt or short dress. Depends on how you want to wear it. I think it's super cute. I ordered for New Year's, if you watched my caftan video, I ordered a couple of fabrics that didn't come in time. And this is one of them. Look at this sparkly knit. And it's pretty sheer. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it in the camera. Can you see me through that? Can you see? Look at how the window shows. Now, it's, it's never fair to put light behind it because almost anything will shadow through. But you see my hand? You can see right through this. Very, 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 very sheer. So I want this to be a little shimmery knit um, top, but I don't want to see through it. So I ordered this, and this is a um, poly rayon knit with a little bit, I think it's poly rayon and cotton. So it's very soft, plain knit, but it's super drapey, and I'm actually going to line this dress. So we're sewing it exactly the way it is, but you will notice that I have um, two layers, and I'm going to treat the bodice. I'm going to cut, cut the whole bodice out two times. Now if you're making something sheer like this, you could totally make an under slip or an underdress that's completely independent, but I don't want that. I want them to be just one. I want to be able to throw it on and wear it. So we're going to cut out the front and back out of this, and then we're going to cut out front, back, and sleeves out of this. I don't think I'm going to line the sleeve, but I could change my mind, because if I line the sleeve, there's a really neat hem trick. Okay, I'll have to think about that and decide if I want to do that or not with this. Um, should be super fast and I will have a very fun little top that I can wear. Really, because it's um, shiny, it could be worn you know, out for the evening. It could be fun to throw on to dress up something. I can see wearing this a lot. So, off to the cutting room. First thing we're going to do is alter our pattern. Um, the pattern's wonderful about giving us our measurements. So if you compare these measurements, here's our hip and our bust and our waist. You can compare that to your own body measurements. You want to make sure you have ease. So for instance, um, this one says the largest 49 and a half inches. So compared to my bust, um, that would give me a lot, like five or six inches I'm wearing ease from a large, but if I come down to the hip, I don't have quite as much wearing ease because I'm, that's how I'm built. I'm smaller on top than I am on the bottom. I'm curvier in my waist. I have plenty because I'm actually quite a bit smaller in the waist. So we're going to do some very easy alterations. I'm going to cut a large, the whole top for the neck and the shoulder for myself. But af after that, so I'm going to start down here right below um, the arm side, and I'm going to slowly, gradually come out to the largest size for the hem to give myself some fullness. Now, I'm not going to start right at the armpit. I'm actually going to come down just a tiny bit. This is our bust line right through here, and I want um, that to be fairly fitted, and I don't want to add too much fullness to the waist because it's already full, but it's swingy, and that's fine. So I'm going to kind of come down just a little bit and then start easing it out. You don't want to make it too abrupt, or you'll have like little wings on the side. So I'm going to make a very, 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 very gradual increase across for the front and the back. The neck, the shoulder, the arms eye, and the top of the bust will all be cut at a large, and so will the sleeve. So I just gently curved this out. I did it by eye. Um, if you have a real specific fit issue and you know you need to have the fullness up higher because you have a really high full hip, a full high hip, then make sure you mark that on your pattern before you start drawing this side seam. And then I took my other piece, so I drew on the front, and then I just flipped the back over, and I trimmed, or I, I laid it on top and copied it. So it's pretty simple. This is a very, very basic alteration, but an easy way to do it. Now, if you are um, the opposite of me and you're fuller on top and thinner in the hem, then just um, match it for your bust line and don't worry about the hip at all and let it just hang nice and pretty. I'm laying out. I'm going to start by cutting the lining part first and I have 60 inch wide fabric so I folded over the width that I need to get my piece and because of the amount you need you stack them so I'm going to go down this entire side with my bodice pieces and then what's left over will cut out both sleeves and our neckline facings except for the lining, we don't need to do neckline facings. I'm only gonna cut the facings out of our silvery stuff there. Um, so anyway, we're gonna do this for both pieces and cut it out and make sure if you do an alteration like this on the side that you um, don't come to the point. Like you don't wanna have a point down here. You want to stop early 
You want to make sure you have enough room for your uh, hem. So this has an inch and a quarter hem, so you would want to stop ahead of the hem so that when it folds up, it's nice and flat. Otherwise, you're going to get some little pokes, pooks, and triangles and things at your hemline, and it will not look nice. Laying out the silver, and the silver is a little wider than the white, so I can get them side by side, even though this is an extended or plus size. So here's my front and my back, because I don't have as much of the silver as I do the white. And down here at the bottom, I have plenty for the sleeve and the facings. I just love this fabric. This would make a really nice slinky little scarf or something too. Can you see how sheer that is? Okay, now that we're all cut out, sewing with white for now, I've done some little tests. It took some of my scraps. I'm going to sew mine together at the overlock. Um, if you don't have an overlock, you can just use your regular sewing machine. You're going to set it for a small zigzag. This has 5 8 inch seam allowance, so you're going to just stitch everything on the 5 8 inch line at your sewing machine if that's what you're using. If you're using the serger, um, it should have a line for you where to adjust it, and then it's going to trim off a tiny bit, and that actually about 3 8 of an inch, and leave you with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So this is what I've done. And what I wanted to do is decide how I'm going to put this together, because my preference would be to kind of sew two dresses that are attached at the sleeve and the neckline and are free hanging otherwise, so they have separate hems. It always hangs better than treat it as an underlining where you put the two pieces together and sew them as one. Um, and so what I did, because this is so sheer, I wanted to make sure that my seams did not shadow through if I treated them as independent. So I've sewn my seam on my white and I've got my seam on my silver and I just put them on top of each other to see how much of the seam shadows through. And not bad. So I'm going to sew together two dresses right now. I'm going to put shoulders and side seams together. I'm going to make a white one and a silver one. Sew them together and then I will put them together. Oh, someone's at the door. Look who came to join me. Come here. It's my peachy. She's looking at herself in the mirror. You can't see her. She's right here. Look, look. Look, there she is. Sweet, sweet Airedale Terrier. She's gonna hang out with me for a bit. I have a feeling the cat may come too. They're not best of friends, but they are always in the same room, and usually that's with me. Now that the people who came to the house have gone, I'm going to just sew at the serger, my front and back at the shoulder, and my front and back at the side seams. It's very straightforward, um, right sides together. I think I'm going to like it because sometimes with knits, uh, they show your lumps and bumps. They're real good about just letting everything kind of show through and having two layers, having a glittery layer, and having this, which has a nice hand, but it also is just firm enough. I think it's going to hide a lot of the lumps and bumps and things I don't really want to shadow through, including like panty lines. Um, so I'll be back in a minute with my shoulders and my side seams done. And the cat. I love my pets. It's a thing. Come here. Look. This is my kitty cat. Okay. All right, I'll be back in a minute. Okay, I have two dresses here, and I'm going to put them to each other at the neck and the armhole before we move on. Now, you want to make sure, you could go ahead and actually hem at this point if you wanted to. Make sure that, since I made them separately, the lining hem needs to be shorter than the outer dress hem by a half an inch to an inch. So it says there's an inch and a quarter hem. So that's what we're going to turn up for our outside dress, our silver dress. But the inside dress needs to be turned up more. And, or you can do the inch and a quarter, but you want to trim off a little bit first before you do it, just so that um, they are slightly different on the inside. You want the hem of the lining of the white piece, that in this case, to fall within your inch and a quarter. So let's say we took off a half an inch and turned it up, then it would be a half an inch above the other hem, which is perfect. We want it to be somewhere in there, half an inch to three quarters of an inch shorter than the outer skirt, and that just means our slip won't show. We don't want our slip to show. We want it to be a mystery how this dress hangs and looks so beautiful and skims the body. Like we don't don't show our secrets. Don't show our, show our sewing secrets. So now we're gonna put these two together. I have not hemmed it, but I certainly, I did serge the hem, however. So I'm going to put these together. There's two ways you can do this. I'm gonna treat it like a lining. So I want the pretty or nice side to be against my skin. So these seams are going to go against the seams of the dress. So I'm gonna flip this dress around real quick. 
This does not fray at all. I could actually even get away with not hemming this silver. It's so cool. I do need to give it a steam though. I don't know if it'll show in the camera, but there's a, quite a little line in it that's gonna go right around the body at the hemline. So we're going to take shoulder to shoulder. Now, if you wanna press something like this, this is very synthetic. You have to be really careful. And I wouldn't actually press directly on it. I would hold maybe some steam a little away and let just the steam penetrate very gently and then maybe just pull gently on the seams instead of pressing it with a hot iron or use a press cloth, something like that, because this is the kind of fabric that will melt. All right, so I'm going to just take this at the neckline and we're gonna line them up front and back. So here's the back of this dress. I'm gonna kind of flip it around. And we're going to slide one into the other. All right. So here we are, not very exciting. That's it, that's how it hangs. Real simple, it'll look really cute when the neck and the sleeve are in, but see they're together, that's it. So I'm going to just put a few pins at the shoulder to hold everything um, along the neckline to keep it in place and we're gonna start working on our sleeve next. Now to do the sleeve, I decided to go ahead and line the sleeve so that everything's um, exactly the same from the outside. If I didn't, the sleeve's gonna look different. Um, it, I don't know if you can see, but with the lining behind it, it lightens up the fabric a little bit. And without the lining behind it, it would be the body and the color is just slightly different, which is fine, but I would rather have it all the same. And I can do my little secret, um, my little secret hemming trick with the lining. So now that these are just held together and pinned. We're gonna take both, both sleeves and we're just going to sew this little underarm seam for both sleeves and then we're gonna put them together at the hem, sew them at the hem, flip it through, it's already hemmed and then we'll be ready to set the sleeve in. What a trick. So let me get both sets of sleeves, the white one and the silver one sewn together at this underarm. Remember there's, um, I believe an inch and a quarter hem on this as well, there is. So I'll have to show you some tricks um, on how we're going to do that because we're going to line it and hem it all at the same time. All right, back in a minute with that song. Two sets of sleeves. Now what we're going to do, and we have to make sure, make sure you mark your fronts and backs and so forth on your sleeves so you can tell the difference. I always cut through just very slightly. So I have these little teeny tiny cuts. So that's the back of my sleeve. I'm going to match right sides together so my sleeves and make sure, so here's my back, here's my underarm seam like this, and here they are along the hem. And I'm going to just serge together this hem and then flip it around. Now there's an inch and a quarter hem here, so I'm going to trim off. Instead of trying to trim all of that at the serger, I'm going to trim down all but a quarter of an inch of this hem and then just serge around that outer edge. But we're going to serge this part and then when I flip it around, it will be automatically hemmed. I will understitch though to make sure that that just doesn't peek through a little bit, so I'm gonna do a little understitching too. But I'm going to match up both sleeves, just like this, serge around here, flip it through and do some understitching. So I'll come back to show you the flipping and understitching. But I'll have a hemmed sleeve, just like that, and we'll be ready to put them in. So here's my little sleeve lined, and when we open it up, so this is how it looks. And then of course this is going to fold to the inside. But before I do that, I'm going to press all of the seam allowance to the white side and I'm going to top stitch just a little bit along this white. It's an understitching, but it pulls everything towards that side. And then when I press this up, it'll help keep the white from peeking back down. So that's my hope anyway. So I'm going to now go to the sewing machine and I'm going to press seam allowances and everything down towards the white side and just do a real small little top stitching all the way around with my white, and then it'll be ready to flip around and be hemmed. So here's my two pieces of the sleeve that are attached at the hem, and I've pressed everything towards the white, so there's no seam allowance hanging down on this side, and we're just gonna do a quick little top stitch. And when we flip it back over, it really shouldn't show, this is very sheer as you can see, but it shouldn't show because it's going to all be white underneath, and it'll just kind of disappear behind this beautiful silver. So that's how it's looking. And you can see when this is flipped around how it'll help hide it. See, you can't even see it at all through that. Perfect, and I did go ahead and 
drop down my even feed foot and it just helped it feed through better. Look at my lovely little sleeve. It's already hemmed and ready to go. And now I'm going to set it in. So we're going to just set the sleeve into the dress. And can we flip this around? Here's the front. So you can see my pins. I've just got it all held together. So we're going to take right side sleeve to right side dress. We're catching all layers. So when we sew this in, we're treating the silver and the white as one. Now they're no longer going to be treated independently. So we're just going to fit these to each other and sew it in and we'll have sleeves already put in. So easy to do. The thing I like about doing sleeves like this is it's you don't have to um, do a hem because the hem's already in. It just makes life easy and it's so nice and finished. And if it flips up, look at how pretty it is on the inside. You just have a nice finished sleeve. One of my favorite ways to finish a short little sleeve like this little cap sleeve. We're going to just match this up and sew it in. I'll be back in a minute with both sleeves in. All that's left after that is we're going to do our neckline facing and our hems and we'll have a dress. All right. I'm worried already. I'm just going to tell you this is looking very just wide and flat. So I hope it's more flattering on. It's definitely just sort of an oversized t-shirt. That's really all it is. Um, it is soft and drapey. Oh, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Here's the sleeve. It's all cute. It's finished. Here we got the hem. I have surged my lining, but not my outer one. So I'm going to go ahead and surge it too. And now we're going to work on our neckline facing. So we have two little neckline pieces. We're going to sew them together, right sides together at the shoulders. And this is a facing, so this is actually just going to flip around to the inside. So here's our little facings. We're just going to serge the two shoulders, and then I'm going to go ahead and serge the outer edge so that when I flip it around to top stitch it, that edge is finished. This does not fray. It doesn't, um, sometimes knits will catch and kind of unravel. It, none of that with this. This is a very stable fabric, but I still want all of my edges finished as nicely as possible. I am going to top stitch it. I've already done a little practice piece to see how this looks top stitched and it just disappears. You cannot see the stitching. So I know we'll be able to see sort of a line, but you won't see the actual stitching. It'll just almost look like a design detail because of how the fabric takes the thread. It's gonna look great. I'm really pleased with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and stitch my two little shoulders and then we're gonna apply it to the neckline. We're gonna serge around the neckline, flip it to the inside and then top stitch it down. So I'll kind of show you that process. So that's what's gonna happen there. While I'm sitting at the serger, I'm gonna go ahead and serge my um, edges, my hemlines, just so that those edges are also finished. And then we're ready to finish this and this and we'll have a dress. <clears throat> I have got a dress. So this is how it's looking. Here's my facing. It's attached, but I have not flipped it to the other side and to stitch it down. So that's what I'm going to do next. Now, you could hand whip stitch this if you want it to be invisible down to the lining. Um, you could also, before doing any of that, you could understitch this. So you flip your, your seam allowance up towards the facing, top stitch that first, then flip the whole thing over. That just helps keep from getting the facing creep where it kind of tries to peek back through. So it depends on your fabrics, what you've chosen, how slinky they are. You're likely not lining this like I am. Uh, but if you are, that's an option. But we can... Uh, do the little quick understitching right along that facing, flip it down, and then I'm going to just top stitch this around personally. You could also whip stitch it by hand if you want it more hidden. Um, press it if you have something that's not like mine. I have done a little steaming. It definitely needs a press cloth or something, but I've been able to steam out most of the line that I could see. So I'm gonna do this top stitching. The other thing I'm going to do is turn up my hems. This has an inch and a quarter included hem. I'm gonna turn up one inch on my silver and I'm gonna turn up an inch and a half on my white. So I'm kind of dividing the difference and that's gonna just make my silver a tiny bit longer and my white a tiny bit shorter. Um, and I'm just turning them up and, and hemming them. The white uh, layer, let me find my white layer. I'm treating it like a, uh, like a lining. So I'm turning my hem to the inside to the wrong side and then top stitching. So the inside of the garment that's next to my body is pretty. All of the seams are touching each other. So the seams from the silver are touching the seams from the white. So I'm gonna get all of that in 
and then I will show you the finished product. I might put it on the dress form, I might put it on me, I don't know which. I haven't tried it on at all, and I'm a little concerned about the fit of this particular style. I went down a little bit, I went down, I often we'll do an extra large in things, but this had so much wearing ease, and I could see how wide the shoulder was. It's just sort of an oversized look. I went down to a little bit smaller for the top part, so we'll see how it hangs, how it looks. I don't want it to look like a big wide block. I don't want to look like I'm wearing a glittery cinder block, which is always a concern for me, um, just because of my shape. It may not be as flattering as I hope, so we'll we'll see. I'll, I'll give you that information next, after all this little bit of top stitching and hemming. I've slipped it on, and it is just about the perfect length um, with this slightly shallower hem on me. Everyone's different. It is definitely oversized. I did the large, and you can see I'm going to just step back a little bit so you can kind of see how the bodice fits. You can see where the sleeve is, and I did take the full hem in the sleeve. It just looks like a t-shirt. Um, it's cute in person. I don't know how it's coming off on the camera. It's a little hard to tell from here, but it's very sparkly. Um, I'm going to turn because I have mirrors right here and look at it for a minute. Okay, I'm going to back up so you can see. Ta -da! So this is it. It really looks like um, pajamas <laughs> in the mirror or in the viewfinder. Not super flattering, I don't think. It just sort of looks like pajamas. It is what it is. It's just a t-shirt. It's just a long t-shirt. Super comfy and uh, easy to sew. This was a very fast project, especially if you're not lining it. This will take no time at all to put together to make this little top. You can make the whole little set in a day. Make both shirts, or the shirt, the dress, and the shorts easily. Very cute and simple. Again, I did the large on top, and then I sized out in the hem to make the hem just a little bit fuller to skim across because I'm fuller in the hip. But you can see it's a sack. It's a t-shirt. It's just a t-shirt. I kind of would like the sleeve a little bit shorter on me. That's just my personal preference. I'm going to look at the picture. It looks shorter on the girl too, and that's I did take the full amount in, but on the picture, her sleeve is closer to this. And I think that's a little more flattering. I always find that a sleeve that's in line with the bust line, perfectly in line, is not as flattering on me. If you pull my hair out of the way, you can see the shape of the neckline. <sighs> don't know if I love it. I think it's a great pattern. It's easy to sew together. I don't think it's perfectly flattering on me. <sighs> Everything hangs from the shoulder. So if you look where the shoulder line is, this is my shoulder line. This is the garment shoulder line. I seldom like a drop shoulder. And I did go to the large. I went down, I went small, or than I thought I needed, and I still don't like it. So if this shoulder line were where it belonged, see the sleeve is where it belongs too. Not the most flattering for me. It's a few hours later. I've actually, um, it's dark outside. I don't know if you can tell, but I was downstairs editing this video run errands, I've done a lot of things since then. And I'm looking at the video and I'm looking at how it looks and I'm seeing how I feel about this garment and it's not great. I just know I won't wear it. Now, I love the fabric that it's made out of and I like the idea of it. The thing I don't like is the dropped shoulder. So I'm taking the sleeve out, I'm going to bring that shoulder line up, I'm gonna put the sleeve back in and we're gonna try this again. So. I'll be back in about 15 to 20 minutes. I'm gonna rip out the top part of that sleeve, alter the shoulder line, and I'll come back and show you the shoulder is about two inches too long. So I'm gonna be taking quite a bit out of that shoulder. And if you noticed when I tried it on, you can see how wide the neckline was. This is just an oversized, an oversized shirt. And the thing that's hard to tell by looking at the picture is it doesn't look that oversized on her. Now here's the catch I'm gonna let you in on. Um, it may have been, but what they do on these little models to make them look cute is they put big clips in the back, like they, or pin it. They actually take it in to make it look better than it does. It hangs or will fit a little better for pictures. Um, and they just move the clips. When she turns around, they move the clips to the front and that makes it hang nice. So, um, cause I'm looking at the sleeve on her and this neckline, the neckline looked a lot bigger on me and the sleeve looked a lot bigger on me. And if I were going by my measurements, I probably would have cut an extra large. 
um, according to what this says, an extra large for me would have been huge. I cut the large and it's still, I could have gone down to a medium and I'm a plus size gal as a rule. So um, to get the fit that I want. Now it does show it's drop shoulder. You can see in the drawing, it does show that it's a drop shoulder, but it doesn't look like it on the model. It's hard to tell, but the sleeve is awfully high. So I don't know if they folded the sleeve up. I don't know, I'm just saying. It does not hang or fit the same on me as it does on her. So be aware of that. You may not get the exact same effect. Um, anyway, taking the sleeve out, altering this shoulder line. I'll be back in a little bit. We'll try it on again and see if I like it a little bit better. I also brought up some under garments, some shapewear to put under it just to make me feel a little happier in it because I would never wear a garment like this without some shapewear. TBH. Okay, I'm back. I have taken out wedges like this out of both shoulder and I've learned some things. First of all, it is some better, but really it's just wide. So here's, here's my arm and you can see where the seam is. So no matter what, this is just going to be wide. I'm happier, I am some happier. It did bring the sleeve up a tiny bit. I'm gonna step back just so you can see a little better. But honestly, I could have gone, I almost wish I'd cut this entire top even down to a medium. So I would have done like a medium up here and the extra large in the hip maybe. The hip is fine the way it hangs, um, but I, in the end, I just like a more fitted shoulder line than this. This just is not necessarily, if it's gonna be drop shoulder, I want it to drop all the way down here and then have a sleeve below that. Like this, this is just not for me the most flattering. But I'm gonna step back and let you see how it looks. It does look a little better, it's, it does. I'm happier with it um, than I was. It's still a little long, even though it took out almost an inch and a half, so. Stepping back, so you can see, it still kind of looks like I'm wearing a hospital gown um, in the viewfinder. I think with a pair of leggings, I may actually, it's partly, the, the length is perfect for a dress, but I probably wouldn't wear it as a dress, I probably want to wear it as a top, so I may just shorten the whole thing and make it more of a t-shirt and less of a dress, and I may be happier all the way around. I'm going to wear it a little bit though. I find that like with most things, um, it's better to live with it a little bit and then decide. So I probably will wear it a few times or at least once and just see how I feel in it and how I like it. I still wish the sleeve were just a wee bit shorter. <sighs> Lots of things. If I make this again, and I kind of don't think I will, but if I made it again, I'd probably make a lot of changes. So instead I probably will find a pattern I like better for my body. But don't let it discourage you from making it because this may be exactly what you're looking for. It may be just a plain, simple little top you can throw on and wear and be comfy and happy. So it is very cute. I like the neckline. I think the neckline is actually quite pretty and smooth. Can you see the stitching line? It kind of creates a faux, um, it almost makes it look like it has a little faux crew neck or something on it, but it's pretty. All right. I'm gonna stop here, no more alterations. It's late, I'm gonna go, I started a little glass of champagne that I didn't even get to finish because I was like, I'm gonna fix that top. Well, I sort of fixed it. And now I'm gonna go finish editing this and I will see you next week for another fun video. Bye.